Josh Butel for From The Stands, uh, joined by one of the greatest combat sports stars of my generation, any generation on planet Earth, the great DC. DC, thank you for the time, I sincerely appreciate it. Uh, my first question for you, man, um, obviously a big fight this uh, this Sunday between Israel and Drikas, and I know you spoke with, with Izzy um, yesterday, um, and with a win on Sunday, does Israel become the greatest middleweight of all time? Because I feel like, I feel like with a win becoming the three-time middleweight champion, Defeating Drikas, who is undefeated in the UFC, does he become the, the the new middleweight great? He's, I mean, he's right on the cusp, right? Anderson Silva is the greatest middleweight of all time, and is he's already on the short list of guys that can be held in that uh, uh, high, high, as high regard. But becoming a three-time champion is very rare. Only three people have done that: Randy Couture, John Jones, and Israel Adesanya has a chance to do it this weekend. Um, I don't know that I can definitively say that he would be the greatest of all time, but I do know that the conversation restarts because before he lost the belt, we were already talking about maybe this is the best guy we've ever seen. So I think we restart the conversation, especially if he wins and then continues to defend that belt as he did the first time. Um, one guy I don't think we're talking about a lot at the moment, um, who is obviously one of the greatest of all time, is, is Alexander Volkanovsky. And yes. It looks like he has no clear direction or clear path at this point with the next fight in line. Um, Obviously, Tapuri and Holloway's booked um, for 308, I believe. So, do you think he should sit there and wait for that the winner of that fight? If not, is there a fight that you think at lightweight, featherweight, that that he should step in and take? Well, think about this, right? Like they were going to give him an immediate rematch, mm. so he's right there. I would, I would wait if I'm Volkanovski, because again, like Izzy and Volkanovski were so busy. Yeah. They were fighting so often. A break doesn't hurt these guys. Yeah. He lost that belt this year. Yeah. So we don't need to rush him back to fighting. You know, he's had a little bit of a rough go at it with, with Makachev and then the way the Taporia fight went. So I'd wait if I'm Volkanovski. And then we don't need to see him fight another featherweight. We already know that he can beat the vast majority of them that are still the best in the world. Yeah. So I, I'd wait. And last one for me, DC, is I just want to know, man, like Australian MMA has become one of the great hotbeds for, for MMA all over the world. Um, and obviously, you know, the UFC loves coming here now. So I guess what has that been like for you watching the growth of, of the sport here? So many guys have got Stuart Nickel debuting this weekend. Tom Nolan's had four fights in a year. So it's, it's a real, become a real breeding ground for, for talent here. And I guess I just wanted your thoughts on that. You know, I fought here in two of my earlier fights. I fought in a league called XMMA in Sydney. Mm. And you saw the passion for the sport even back then. Mm. Right now, it just feels like a land of people who absolutely love fighting mm. is starting to get recognized for the love that they have for fighting. They've always loved it. Now people are taking note of the fact that you guys love fighting, right? And the teams that are popping up are training these guys to be world champions. City Kickboxing has, and Eugene Behrman, they've done such a great job mm. of getting their talent, forming them and making them the best in the world. It, it's a credit to that man because it's hard to build a champion from the ground up. He's done it on a number of occasions. So, yeah, it's tremendous. DC, as an aspiring journalist, man, I appreciate your time so much. I really, really thank you very You're much. Man. Thank, thank you very you, much, bro. Appreciate thank you. you. Thank you.